This app was able to fit so many amazing features by separating into different view modes. So, so to access your view modes, press this middle button right here on iPad. And then here we have a list of all the available view modes. And the exciting part is this scrolls. So we might get new view modes in the future. But for now, we have Starter, Auto Mix, Classic, Pro, Looper, One Deck, and Four Deck. So I'm gonna show you every feature in every mode, where to use the features, how to find them, and what to do. So Classic Mode is gonna look like this. This is the mode that you're gonna use if you, uh, one, if you wanna do turntableism, scratching, and stuff like that, because you'll get the biggest view of your jog wheels, or if you just like the old school turntable and a mixer DJing opposed to the more modern uh, like DJ software view, which is, which is what you're going to see in pro mode. And a lot of the features carry over this video. I'm going to go really fast just so you could see everything that this app is capable of doing. So the first thing that I always teach is how to load songs. So your music sources are gonna be up here. They're gonna be blinking if there's nothing on it, or you'll have the album art if there is something on it. So open it up like that. Now we have a couple of different sources. This app has the most sources, the most streaming services of any other app. So my collections is your playlist. That's where you're gonna make, create, and organize your playlist. And then here are our streaming services. I recommend using Tidal because of video mode. I'll get into that later, but you could use Apple Music, SoundCloud, Beatport, or BeatSource. You could use videos on your device or musics on your device. Or if you just wanna get started quick, DJ Pro gives you some music that you could start DJing with for free. So in my collections, this is where you're gonna make playlists. Playlists are very important for DJing, so I'm gonna show you really quick how to create a playlist. So you're gonna press, press the plus button and then there's playlist, smart playlist or playlist folders. Playlist folders is basically a folder, a uh, playlist inside of a playlist. So you could do like, you could do like 2000s music and then separate it into like hip hop, uh, R&B, EDM, stuff like that. But to create a playlist, we'll go to playlist here. You can name it, new playlist, add. And now we have a playlist. If there's no songs, you could press add songs and you could add it from your library or you could switch to the sources. So let's just say title. Let's say you wanted to add some 50 cent. You just type in the 50 cent and it, this you have to be signed up for the paid version of title. And then you could just press the plus buttons over here and then done. And there they are. You just made your first playlist. Another way to do it is if you're just in title and you search, you press these three dots, add the playlist and then you can find your playlist, new playlist, just like that, add it. So that's how you're gonna make playlists. So your music sources and playlists, you guys know how to do that now, let's move on. Up here is gonna be loops, very simple. You could go all the way down to one and 32. you get like a little buzz or you could do a loop all the way up to 128 and it's very easy it's always there you could use all your features and then just very easily set a loop really quick by pressing it uh, uh, yeah. just like that sync is not cheating it is going to do two things number one number one is if you press it once you will match the BPM to the exact same BPM as the, the song on the other deck. So press it once, see how it jumps to 170. Now this is a way to use sync and still manually DJ because you could turn it off. So now you could DJ and sync isn't on, but you got the exact BPM because these BPM sliders are a little bit, could be a little bit difficult to use, uh, especially if you're just using the touchscreen. So having a way to sync them is good. And then also, if you leave sync on, it is gonna match the beats together so you don't have to do it manually. A lot of people say it's cheating, but it's just another tool you can use. Now, if we do this drop down menu here and then go to tempo, we could change the sensitivity of the BPM slider. I recommend keeping it in the middle because if you go too high, it's gonna be really hard to be precise. And if you go too low, you can't do big BPM jumps. So I would keep it on either 16 or 25. Moving right along, these jog wheels are active. You could scratch, you could, you could do DJ tricks, spin backs, stuff like that. 
these arms are active. You can actually scrub through the track using these arms, like a real a record deck. And then these buttons oh, yeah. work as like a power button. And it's a good way if you want to go from large BPM to small BPM. And then over here, we have plus and minus. You could slightly adjust the BPM for doing manually manual beat matching. A new feature down here, we have Neural Mix. So you can instantly go from instrumental to acapella. Just like that. But now we have new features with a recent update. Press the drop down menu. We can have effects. You can have effects one, effects two. Just another place where you could have your effects and then you could change them with the drop down menu here for effect one, effect two. And then you could skip. So if you want to make a cue point, certain amount of beats in you could change the amount of beats here 16 so the, it's going to be go 16 great way to set your cue points which are really important and i'll get to the, those in a second this button here will open up your mixer section volume sliders levels these are where your gain controls are going to be if you're using this software you're probably not going to adjust the gain because it automatically changes the gain i went over that in my settings videos so you could see when you load up a new song it changes the gain slightly so you have the same volume, similar volume on both tracks. We have a filter up here. It's gonna add high pass, low pass filter and a resonance sound. Filters are very important and it's cool that we have them right at our fingertips. EQ, lows, mids, highs, and then we have the filter again, traditional EQs, you could cut out parts of the song. And we still have our volume control and we still have our levels. It was really innovative how they were able to fit both of those. But now if we press this drop down menu, we have a narrow mix EQ, cut out the drums, cut out the harmonics, cut out the vocals, just like that. Or we have a narrow mix EQ. This is a new feature, a really great way to do instant acapellas and instrumentals. And you can change it from two bands all the way up to four bands. This button here will open up our waveforms, a great way to visually see what's going on. Their waveforms are very detailed, color coordinated, very easy to see what's going on. If you press the drop down menu here or here, you could do slice and skip mode. These are for DJ tricks. Uh, skip is you could scratch and then the track will still go. And then it will skip to where it would have been if you didn't touch it. And then slice, you could slice pieces of the track, so. And then we could see our Nero Mix stems in there and then isolate them like that if we have that selected. And then here, we could use our, our sampler and looper. Here's our sampler. It's a very limited view of our sampler. I'll go over this more in the next mode. And then the looper here, you could kind of make your own beats. So now we'll press the middle button and we'll go through the other view modes. Let me just show you starter really quick. There's not really much you could do. You get two decks. Two decks, you get a mixer. You could use um, the crossfader effects. So any one of these effects is going to do a transition for you just by moving the crossfader. BPM slider here and a little effects, instant effects, go, go, DJ. sampler. This is the most basic view. If you're just starting out, you don't really want to learn how to DJ, but you want to mix two songs together, you could use this view mode. Next is going to be auto mix mode. This app has an amazing auto mix mode. Press this drop down menu here. You could choose your transitions. I'm not going to get too much into auto mix mode, but you turn it on, it mixes the playlist for you. So now we're in pro mode. This is the mode that I recommend that you're gonna be in the most. So we have the BPM sliders over here. This button here will make it so it doesn't change the pitch of the song, even if you uh, adjust the BPM a lot. So listen to it. So it's off. It gets rid of like the chipmunk or the deep voice sound if you adjust the BPM too much. Now these jog wheels, are pretty new. So we have our waveforms here. I already showed you what the waveforms do. These jog wheels are the same thing as those record decks, but much smaller. And then they show information such as the BPM. 
and how much you adjusted the BPM and how much time is left in the song. Press the drop down menu again. We get some more features. We could get rid of the jog wheels. We could change the orientation of the waveforms and we have our narrow mix again. Down here, we have features. Let me just show you because it's the same thing in classic. If you open this up, you lose your jog wheel, but you have all these features. In pro mode, you could access all those features, but you have more features up here. So you could do more stuff at the same time, which is what DJing is all about. That's why I recommend being in pro mode. So I'm gonna go over what all these features are. Number one is neural mix. So you have four bands. You could do the drop down menu, bring it to three bands, bring it to two bands. And then you could isolate. So that's isolated just vocals. You could do it for any stem. And then you could get rid of that stem by pressing the X or you could slowly fade it up, fade it down. New feature over here, press the drop down menu. It is mute effects. When you get rid of the vocals, it's gonna add an echo. So it adds an echo, try to do it at the right time. I did not do it at the right time. But if you turn it off, it just instantly cuts it off. I really like having the mute effects on. It adds more of like a professional feel. This is where you're gonna find your cue points. So if you don't have any cue points selected, find the spot in the song where you wanna set it. Let's just say right here. Now you set the cue point. If you press the pencil button, you get a drop down menu and now you can name it. So start, and then you could choose the colors and really cool. These colors are going to appear on your controller. If you have an RGB controller, and then you could press the X to get rid of it. You get eight of these pitch cue is going to add like high pass, low pass, um, to cue points. Cool for doing DJ tricks, turntable -ism, stuff like that. Skip is going to do the same thing I showed you with this button down here if you go to skip But it's just another way where you could use it So let's say you want to have your regular cue points open here and then Skip ahead 16 beats and set a cue point you could use it So it's really cool that they added another place for it and then here you could set your Auto mix start and stop so if you have this selected on your song anytime this song comes up on auto mix which I showed you guys it is going to start and end it there so you could have auto mix kind of mixing exactly how you would a really cool feature we get a hidden drop down menu here slice just another way to use the slice feature turntableism making beats stuff like that and then you could edit your beat grid if you wanted that's a little bit more advanced so i'm going to leave it on skip next is going to be our loops so we still have this loop button here that i showed you but now you could do manual loops. So you could set in and out, save loops or auto loops. So now two, four, it's gonna do the same thing as up here, just another way to do it. Saved, you could make loops and then save it. So anytime you play the song, your save loops will be there. Like if there's a vocal or a part where you like to loop it, you could do that. Bounce is gonna add like that stutter. And then pad is gonna do the same thing, but you can add high pass and low pass. Like that. Effects. So you could use three manual effects at the same time to change them. There's a drop down menu. There's audio effects, video effects, and audio and video effects. I'll get into that more with the in the video mode section, which I'm gonna do last. And you could also set these effects to be narrow mix stem. So now I have a reverb only on the vocals. And you could put it on any effect that you want. Three at the same time. Here's how you're gonna adjust them. And then you have your wet and dry over here. Instant is, uh, you can't adjust them, but it just sets instant effects. And then pad, is gonna take one effect and you can add high pass and low fast filter to it. Here we have regular EQs, lows, mids, and highs, and then we have a filter. This button is gonna be another way to access your library, just like if you were to press here. 
But now we could see all these features up here and then control our library playlist, everything we need down here. Now, if you deselect one of these, you get the biggest view of your waveforms. So if you're used to DJing without jog wheels, different softwares like Traktor you may be used to, this is where you could do it. And then you could, if you want vertical waveforms, here's the part in the app where you could see it the best. If you press this, we get to our looper and our sampler. So the looper, it, you can make beats. So you have like kick drums, and then it goes all the way over to effects and stuff. To change them, there's a drop down menu here. All different ones you could download sometimes to add new ones. So to start a beat, you just press these boxes. So just like that, sampler is here. Go, go DJ. Go, DJ. All these samples, you could create your own custom samples, or there's a lot of different packs. DJ. There's a dedicated looper mode, but you lose all those other features, and you could do pretty much the same thing, except control the individual volume. So I recommend if you're lose, using the looper and the sampler, do it in pro mode, because you could use more features. One deck, you could load one deck at the same time, have a better view, add your cue points, skip through it, all the stuff you need to organize your tracks. That's what you're going to do in one deck mode. Four deck mode, you could DJ with up to four decks, which is really cool. So everything is the same, but you could do four decks and things are a little bit tighter. Video mode. You could DJ with music videos through Tidal, or you could DJ with the visualizer. It's very easy to connect your iPad into a projector or a TV with DJ Pro. And if you want to see my full, if you want to see my full tutorial on how to use video mode, check out this video over here. Thank you.